I travel alone in my 21 foot camper van, but am I lonely? In this video, we're gonna address that subject head on and I'm gonna give you four specific ways that I do not become lonely in the van. And I'm gonna share with you two apps to help you discover cool things in your area when you're traveling. This is a cutaway from my What's Up Wednesday live YouTube Q&A show every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Let's jump this into it. This comes from, let me zoom in here for you. This comes from uh, Heart is Where You Roam. And their question is, sorry I missed Wednesday. Can you go over how you deal with being alone on the road? Or is there a video you did already? Yeah, you can link it for me. I already spend most of my days alone, so it won't be new. And I was thinking maybe there are tricks to it. I could start now, which might help me out too. And it's a really good question. I've never really done a video specific about it, but I thought I'd put some of this together tonight and we cut it, repost it as a separate video along with the van tip tonight, because it's a, it's kind of a big question. And I've, I've met many of you and you're solar tra solo travelers. So I do have some trips, uh, trips, well, we have that too, tips for you tonight. And um, let me share those with you. The first one is I think we need to define what lonely is versus alone. So I went to the dictionary and here's what I found. There's a big distinction. So lonely, it's an adjective. Sad because no one, sad because one has no friends or company. Without companions would probably be the two most appropriate there. Um, sad that I don't have friends. I got all of you. I got so many friends I don't know what to do with. It's so amazing because of this whole experience. So that is what lonely is. Ready for the next one? Sad because no one has friends. I just love that. Uh, alone. Having no one else present on one's own. And if you think about that from an emotional standpoint, that's a big distinction, ladies and gentlemen. So I kind of choose to be alone. And let me kind of describe this a little bit for you and give you a couple of tips. I think you're going to like this. Oh, long we gotta go. So I frankly am a workaholic. I probably put in um, 60, 70 hours a week, maybe even more than that. I don't know. I am completely absorbed by my YouTube channel and the brand work I do for Volta and Embassy RV. So I have very little time to be feeling sorry for myself and lonely because I got so much stuff to do. I don't have enough hours in the day. You're like, wah, wah, wah. Everybody else has the same problem. Um, yeah, I get it. So there's there's viewer comments. There is, um, again, working with Volta, working with uh, Embassy RV, um, uh, making uh, videos. I've discovered a whole new uh, video system that I'm starting to apply. More about that later. So basically, I'm pretty busy, and I have no time to be lonely. However, this is kind of the, the tip for you. I like to meet folks, too. I like to meet folks after hours. And here are some ways that I meet folks that are kind of obvious, but sometimes not. So when I'm at a campground, whether it's a KOA or a state park or a, uh, um, uh, well, we'll talk about in a second. So campfires, bars and restaurants, events and activities. Those are the main ways um, I most often find friends, you know, like airplane friends, or have friends for a couple hours and then you go and you never see them again and that's okay we don't we aren't going to be bffs every person we meet right just enjoy the moment together be present and uh, let me explain this a little bit deeper for you maybe we get a tip out of this join a campfire so many of you have kind of seen uh this in action uh i typically do not build campfires at campgrounds because they smell bad they stink up everything in the van and it takes forever to get the smell out so what i do it's kind of reason number one i'm lazy uh, reason number two is I want to join other people's campfire. And what I'm looking for is some folks that look cool. Uh, maybe it's a couple and they're kind of sitting there alone. They got a good fire going and I kind of roll up on them. I got a libation in my hand maybe. And our veers, where are you from? It's always the first question. Nice rig, good icebreaker. Hey, you taking any strays in tonight? And I just chat them up. And if it's a couple, They've been sitting there all day and looking at each other for 30 years. They're kind of running out of things to say. They're usually on their phones. So again, I roll in, and if they see me in my van, it's a real icebreaker as well. So I meet friends at campgrounds by inviting myself to their campfire. And let me tell you, it's a beauty. And I put just enough libation in my in my glass, so I'm good for about you know 15, 20 minutes. 
then my glass is empty, and now I have a decision. Are they cool enough to come back, or do I move on to the next campfire, or am I just ready for bed? I've had enough campfire. So try that as one thing. This is kind of an obvious one. Uh, however, traveling alone, I do not sit at tables. I sit at the bar. Why? Because that's where all the action is. That's where the bartender is. That's where I get all the local advice. Is it okay to park in the parking lot, park on the street? What should I do? What shouldn't I do? The bartender's full of advice, and they're going to give me every bit of it because I'm going to pay them a tip. And there's typically people at the bar, too. And they're like, eh, where are you from? And if they see my van, it's an instant icebreaker. So I sit at the bar on purpose. I learned this from my mom and dad, and I, I rarely sit at a table. Rarely. And I get all my stuff and I lay it out. I plug into the, uh, the thing and I end up giving a van tour inevitably um, if it's close. And um, so try that. If you're needing some companionship, try sitting at the bar. It's kind of obvious, I know. How about this one? I got a tip for you on this one. Attend an event. Now, I have not done this in a little while. But when I was roaming around the first year, I kind of was a little lonely. And I was a little trying to find my bearings. So I thought, what if I attend an event? What am I talking about? You ever heard of Eventbrite? Have you ever heard of Meetup? So I've actually done these, and I need to do them again. And the point is, if you get one of these apps, you're kind of the same idea. And you could find a group of people like-minded with a topic you're interested in, a point of interest, and you can go meet up, join their event. There's, it's either free or it's a um, very small uh, dollar amount. Let me zoom in here so you can see this. And let me tell you about one I did through Meetup. So this is um, from, uh, this is Ypsilanti where I just came from in Michigan. So I kind of scroll through, I'm kind of the arts and culture guy, the history guy, astronomy. So here I, I typed in kind of ultra, here's Friday, first Friday poetry night. Now that actually sounds kind of interesting. If I am in Ypsilanti on Friday, I may well go to this because I'm going to meet some cool people. I'm going to hear some interesting stuff. I'm going to make some, you know, single serving friends and be gone. This one, uh, let me zoom in here for you. Same idea. Here's the categories. I'm not worried about career and business, but certainly not interested in dancing. I fall over. Um, but hobbies and passions, community environments, um, arts and culture usually gets my attention. And then here there's make a mug. Now wouldn't that be fun to go make a mug as part of a Saturday afternoon, just something completely random, make a few friends. And I have done this. I done this, um, I can't remember what it was. Um, I can't even remember, I just want to do something different. And I used Meetup and I went to a Seattle Seahawks game at a bar. And they had a Seattle Seahawks. Um, they were all Seattle transplants. Were, it was in California, I think it was. And I showed up. And before I learned not to go to sports events because I'm the world's worst sports. I'm a big sports group. I know nothing about it. baseball. Also this thing, right? Yeah. Um, so showing up with a bunch of Seahawks nuts, I, we didn't really click. So good lesson learned there. But it was a lot of fun. We could talk about Seattle. And I felt, at least for a little while, I had a little camaraderie um, until I kind of got bored with the Seahawks maniacs. And I excused myself. But if looking for things to do on the road, we're surrounded by people. We're surrounded by things. Give that a try. Um, campgrounds, KOAs in particular, do fun things on the weekends. Uh, the KOA I just came from, they had a karaoke night. They had a, uh, a DJ night. You go dancing. They have bingo. They got stuff for kids. And if you have not been to a libation-heavy bingo game at a campground, you have not lived. Ladies and gentlemen, I have had some of the best experiences playing bingo. Even I can keep up with that game. And keeping up the seniors, man, they got five cards wide and they're too deep. And I'm like, what? What? B what? B9? And it's just, it's so much fun. So that's one way to meet some folks. Um, you can sneak a libation in or just a you know, soda pop. Not everybody needs to have a libation, but it helps. How about this? Live music. I've had so many cool experiences forcing myself to get out of the van and joining a live music event. What you're looking at here, let me zoom in for you. And then we're going to say hi to a bunch of folks. We've got a great group in here tonight. 
live music. I love live music. I love seeing artists. I love seeing passion. This was country western in particular. This was in Amarillo. It was a rooftop bar. Um, there was no reservation. Just kind of showed up. I said, hey, I'm a solo guy. Put me at a table and put other solo people with me. So I'm instantly trying to create a group around me, right? This cat in the hat um, there at the table uh, was a huge a fan and friend of the guy in the um, baseball cap. He was the singer, Scotty Walker, I want to say. I can't remember. Uh, but they knew each other. They, he introduced me. got my picture taken with him, clearly. And uh, I'm pretty sure that never would have happened if I sat by myself. So put me to a table, join others, can join me, and it's a community event, right? we could share the experience together. I'll never forget that night. It was one of the coolest things. Um, and how did I find him? This is kind of a tip for you, technology-wise. We've talked about this in the past. And this is an app called Bands in Town. B-A-N-D-S-I-N Town. Bands in Town. If you're a music lover, please download this to your device. The iPad app is spectacular. I wish Apple Music would buy this and incorporated into Apple Music. What it does, it searches your area. You can search by genre. It tells you what's going on tonight. This was, again, I just did this a, a, a night yes, yesterday. Started working on the show. And uh, that, that's what was going on though, over the next few days. Every kind of stuff. You know, the shins, uh, the pink with the guitar would probably get my interest. And I want to go see that. And they're usually in really small venues. They're kind of famous in, their, in local areas. You meet people with a common theme and it's just great. Let me roll a few more and then we'll, um, then I'll pause. So using the same app, Bands in Town, last October, I was in Las Vegas doing some Volta business and I discovered that, um, are you ready for this? I couldn't believe it. Adam Lambert was in Las Vegas playing. It was Halloween Eve and I had a little bit of a posse with me. Uh, this is Mike and Janice and, um, and Arkansas, Arkansas Tracy, um, they kind of joined me sort of on purpose by accident. It was sort of really cool. And it turns out um, Janice is a huge Adam Lambert fan. So I'm like, let's buy tickets. We went to dinner and I cannot tell you what a great time we had. It was at the Venetian. The last time I saw Adam Lambert, he was with Queen. Pretty big concert. This was really intimate. This is my third time seeing him. And it was just the most amazing thing. And the only reason we showed up and have this experience together is because I use that app. Just being a little curious, what's in, there's a gazillion things in, in Vegas all the time and um, can't see them all. And but Adam Lambert, I'm gonna go back and see him. So the punchline here is, uh, I'm alone by choice, but I'm never lonely. Why? Because of all these ways to find things around me, find people, how to engage. You gotta a little be a little bit of an extrovert. And those are some ways to do it but you're gonna have some commonalities with those folks around you. So I hope that helps. And um, heart is where you roam. Sounds like, um, is this oh my God. there's a different van. Um, I hope that helps because um, I've done, I've done all those things and I need to do more. I hope you enjoyed that video. Some obvious tips and some maybe not so obvious tips on how to kind of discover people and places around you and really enhance your travel experience. Whether you're traveling as a couple or traveling as a solo, maybe even just part-time because one spouse wants to stay home. I think there's some ways that we can just increase our human experience while doing our travel experience. And for me for the first time, howdy, my name is Scott. Just appreciate you watching the video and being part of the Go Small Live Large community. Until we see you soon, I wish you to journey on and peace be with you. See you soon.